with Clemson carrying an abundance of talent on the defensive line, a player looking to transfer for a new opportunity to get some playing time was bound to happen. Clemson defensive tackle Josh Bell could pursue an opportunity elsewhere, as he announced with a statement on his Twitter account Wednesday afternoon. Clemson has released Belk from his scholarship at the player's request. Belk was a four-star recruit in the class of 2018, according to his rival's profile. The six feet minus three inches, 325 pounds recruit was a massive prize for Dabo Swinney and the Tigers, especially considering in-state rival South Carolina was a runaway favorite in the recruiting process according to multiple recruiting analysts. Other schools extending offers to Belk included Florida State, LSU, North Carolina, and NC State. Belk was an early enrollee at Clemson this spring. Making things a bit juicier with this potential transfer is the idea Belk could potentially transfer to South Carolina. A South Carolina native Belk going from the Tigers to the Gamecocks would be quite fascinating on so many levels, although for now there is nothing tangible to suggest that will be the end result of this entire process at this time. However, even though Belk has not been around for more than a spring semester, he will still be required to sit out the 2018 if he transfers to another FBS program due to NCAA transfer rules. The only exception would be if Belk and his new school filed for a waiver to allow for immediate eligibility, but that can tend to be an uphill climb in this specific scenario. The good news is Belk can jump right into using a red shirt here if needed, which may have been a possible outcome for the fall even if he did stick around at Clemson. Follow at Kevin on KFB The Big 12 requires its members to schedule at least one game each against another power conference opponent. Texas Tech is filling that requirement in 2025 and 2026 with the addition of a home-and-home -home series with Oregon State of the Pac-12. Texas Tech will host Oregon State on September 13, 2025 in Lubbock, Texas. Oregon State will host the Red Raiders the following on September 12, 2026 in Corvallis. The two schools have not faced each other since 1959. Texas Tech now has at least one power conference opponent scheduled for non-conference play each through 2020 and from 2022 through 2029. The 2021 season currently has a need for a power conference opponent to go with a home game against FCS Lamar and a road game at Houston. Of course, by the time 2021 rolls around, maybe the AAC will actually qualify as a power conference. You never know, right? Other future power conference opponents for Texas Tech include Ole Miss 2018, Arizona 2019 2020, NC State 2022 2027, Oregon 2023 2024, and Mississippi State 2028 2029. Oregon State has its share of power conference foes lined up on upcoming schedules as well. This year the Beavers open the on-the-road against Ohio State and next year they begin a home-and-home -home deal with another OSU, Oklahoma State. Oregon State also has a future home-and-home -home deal with Purdue 2021-2024. Follow at Kevin on KFB There is one big reason why Alabama has taken on so many neutral site games over the years. Money. In 2020, when Alabama opens the against USC in the Advocare Classic in Arlington, Texas, the Crimson Tide will once again be richly paid. According to a report from FBSchedules.com, Alabama will be paid $6 million to play USC in Arlington on September 5, 2020 which was previously reported to be the date locked in Julie. Contract. How much USC will be paid for the game was not reported, but you can count on it being a very lucrative check going home with the Trojans. Alabama will also be designated as the home team, with the TV rights to the game residing with the SEC for either CBS or ABC, ESPN. Alabama also received $6 million to play USC in the 2016 edition of the game, when the Crimson Tide steamrolled the Trojans by a score of 52-6. Alabama received a reported $5 million to play in the 2017 Chick-fil-A kickoff game in Atlanta and against Florida State the Seminoles received the same amount. Alabama has received between $4.7 million and $6.4 million for other neutral site games in recent years as well. Alabama will also be paid $4.5 million for opening the in Orlando against Louisville this fall. As much as Alabama has profited from playing in neutral site games under Nick Saban, the scheduling priorities for Alabama appear to be shifting more toward home and home arrangements in the future. A home-and-home -home deal with Texas was just announced this week, and the Crimson Tide will be lining up a home-and-home -home with Notre Dame a few years after that. 
That is not to say Alabama will be done with neutral site games, because there will always be money in the banana stand that is a good neutral site game. Follow at Kevin on FB Oregon State is officially turning itself into the NCAA compliance office. After it was learned Oregon State sent recruiting material to players in Hawaii's football program, Oregon State is submitting information from an internal investigation to the NCAA for self-reported secondary violations. Oregon State claims the mailing of recruiting material inviting members of Hawaii's football program to attend Oregon State's spring game was a simple clerical error. Whether that is true or not, it does seem to be a plausible excuse that was made possible by some sloppy database maintenance that forgot to remove some names from the prospective student-athlete list the mailing was using. Of course, the NCAA prohibits one program from having any contact with players in another program once those players have signed with a school of their choice barring a rare exception C. Penn State sanctions and Illinois coaches showing up on Penn State's campus. Oregon State's previous statement on the matter claimed the school accidentally sent mail to one Hawaii football player. That certainly seems like an honest mistake, even if it is a fairly dumb one. Don't expect much to happen to Oregon State's football program. These secondary violations may only amount to the NCAA's equivalent to a slap on the wrist at the very most. Unless, of course, there is more to this story that has not been reported at this time, Oregon State should just do the right thing, file their claim to the NCAA, and move on from this embarrassing situation. By the way, Hawaii is set to host Oregon State in 2019. Hawaii should send invites to Oregon State for the game and have a laugh over all of this. Follow at Kevin on KFB The ACC is reportedly proposing some changes to the recruiting process that would aim to add dead periods to the recruiting calendar and set a restriction on how soon a school can offer a verbal offer to a prospective student-athlete. According to a report from the Charlotte Observer, the ACC is proposing adding a dead period for recruiting in February and in July. In addition, the ACC proposes reducing the spring recruiting period from six to four weeks over a six-week stretch. These proposals would help ease the amount of work a coaching staff would have to do during the spring when the focus can be centered more on spring football and running the program without having to go on the road making sales pitches to high school students and their families a couple of extra weeks in the off-season. The emphasis would also, in theory, take some of the pressure off prospective recruits. If the ACC has its way, a proposal could also lead to no longer seeing schools offer scholarships to players before September 1st of the student's junior year of high school. In other words, the stories of 12- and 13-year-olds receiving scholarships from USC, LSU, Texas and so on would no longer be possible. That's probably a good proposal that should gain some momentum just for the sake of sanity in the recruiting game. These proposals were designed with a new early signing period adopted last year. After witnessing how the early signing period was executed across the nation, the proposals from the ACC are aiming to address some of the concerns that have become more visible with an early signing period. It remains to be seen how much support these proposals will receive from other conferences at this time. The proposal to reduce the recruiting opportunities in the spring may be supported by other conferences and programs in the South like in the SEC, but that is a change that would likely impact the recruiting abilities more of programs in the North like the Big Ten, expects some possible debates about that particular proposal as the ACC looks to cut down on recruiting opportunities for Big Ten coaches. Follow at Kevin Ong, FB.